In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to give you an overview of an effect that's available from NewBlue. It's part of their Essentials 5 package. It's called the NewBlue Selective Focus. Now, the Essential 5 package does not normally come with a copy of PowerDirector, but it's available through the CyberLink website. And when I find these new blue packages there, I wonder what do they contain and what do, does each effect do? So from time to time, we're going to explore that so you can find out if you want to add some of these packages to your video toolbox. Uh, they're occasionally, they're on sale at a very reduced price. I, for example, was able to buy five new blue packages on sale recently for $29 US and that I found to be a very good value. But if you want to pick up one from time to time, what does it contain and what do its effects do for you? This is one of 10 effects in the New Blue Essentials 5 package, and so we're going to look at it. I'd like to show you two very short clips. The first one does not use the effect we're going to look at today. The second one does, so you'll see a very big contrast. So take a look at the following two examples, and then we'll get back to the selective focus, what it is, and how to use it. So I'm going to take my video clip and move earlier on into the area where we have the nail sticking up above this board. And what I want to do is apply the effect. I'm going to go to the effect room and I can simply click on the FX or press the F4 key. And then I've gone to the subcategory where I have my new blue essentials 5. Now, I notice that I can't see everything because I have several new blue packages, but when you hover the mouse over the name, you get to see the entire name of that particular package. And here I have the option called Selective Focus. I'm going to take and drag it down below track one, then I'll extend it because it's normally only 10 seconds long to cover the last two thirds of this particular video clip. Now what I want to do is see what it's doing. Well, immediately when I click on here, I see that everything is fuzzy, but the top of the nail is not. I'm going to click on the, the focus effect, and then I see I have lots of controls that I can learn about. There are actually 20 presets on the lower left corner. It starts out with default. When I click the down arrow, I get to scroll through all these defaults. And they have some interesting names like Witness Protection, Split Screen Right, sp Split Screen Left. Let me go to Split split Screen Left. Now when I click on the left, it, the left side of the screen is somewhat blurred. The right side's in focus. I probably would want the, the one called Split Screen Right so, so I can see the nail better. And that reversed it. And that's one way to do this. So you see the left side is in focus, the right side is not. There's another rather interesting one, depth of field, which mimics the depth of field in a video camera, where you can control what parts in focus. Now, you might like want to use any of these uh, 20 options. Here's one called peephole, where we, we have a very small amount that's in focus. And that's all I'm seeing in this particular option. But I prefer to actually use all these controls and build my own focus. Let me show you an example of how they work. We're going to click back here, and there is one called uh, Default. And there's also one where you can set it back to Reset to None. Now everything's in focus. We're going to start and build one from scratch. So let's assume I want to do that. I, find my positions. I click on top left and click on the position button. 
and that will tell me the upper left corner where my focus will be. And I move my dot around with my mouse and click on OK. Let's do the top right. I'll double click again. Unfortunately, we can't use all of these four corners at the same time. OK, then I'll use bottom left and it will open up my position window again. We'll focus over here and I'll use bottom right and I'm drawing my rectangle and move over here. Click on OK. Now I'm going to take my blur and turn it up. And now you notice I have this rectangle I've designed where this is in focus and everything else is out of focus. I can feather it a little bit so it's not a, such a, a, a hard rectangle. And then when I move to my video clip and play this, we see the hammer come down and the focus is, again is on the tip of the hammer. The handle and the other things are out of focus and this is my focal area. We also can control the curve. Go from a pure rectangle to somewhat of an oval or a circle if I want. And so that adjusts that. You can control those. Here's another great option and invert it. Let me turn this button on. And now we find this area is out of focus. Everything else is in focus. Well in this case that would be absolutely what we don't want. Then we have another checkbox which is uh, the one I used earlier called test mask. Watch what happens when I click on that. That actually will mask everything that is out of focus. So if I play this, the focus is now on the movement of the hammer on the nail and I also have a nice backdrop where I can put my text and it stands out very clearly. So these are the different tools that you have when you're using this particular tool from New Blue called Selective Focus. Now let me show you another thing you can do using keyframing. I'm going to move over to a different section in this example project, but what I'd like to do first is show you an example, so please look at the following clip. Now in the clip you just saw, we used the same effect. I'm going to click back on it, but we used some keyframing. I can click on the keyframe button and you can see the places where as we were tracking the cyclist, we used this effect to build a keyframe. So at each keyframe, I would change the position as he moved through the set. So let's add another one here. If I look here, I, I would perhaps want to move the upper left a little bit, so I'll click top left and we'll tighten this up over here. And he's a little out of focus on the right area, so we'll take the top right. Oh, I have to click on OK first. And at that moment, we'll take the top right, move it over a little bit, click on OK. We'll do the bottom right, click on the position button, and move a little farther to the right. And click on OK. So I happen to set all these positions. It takes a bit of time. I think I want to put the wheel in focus there too. So we'll go bottom left, click on position, and that makes it a little clearer. Click on OK. And so all we did was go to the tracking of this particular cyclist in the video, and then we changed the positions. And so when we play the video, we find that he is in focus no matter where he is in the frame and everything else is out of focus. So that's a very easy way to use that to draw attention to an object on your screen even though it's in motion. Again, whenever you're doing extensive keyframing it's going to take more time, but it's a nice option you can use when you're looking at the Selective Focus tool from New Blue and as part of their Essentials 5 package. We hope you found this introduction useful as we're looking at more and more tools to enhance your video editing skills. Mm -hmm.